about that update and what that's going yeah, to Yeah, I think it, so, and just for those folks who, uh, so what is the National Integration Center? So, um, we have uh, we kind of got responsibility around, around like three different business lines for us. So, uh, I have a, a, a planning um, implementation branch, uh, which is largely responsible for all of our frameworks, the, re, uh, the revision and maintenance of all of the uh, mission area frameworks, so the National Response Framework Disaster Recovery and Mitigation Protection frameworks. Um, and then also we deliver a lot of planning guidance. Um, so everything from threat specific to, you know, we're working currently and we're going to some detail later on evacuation planning guidance for state, local, um, tribal, territorial uh, emergency managers to supply chain logistics. To, so a series of planning doctrinal guidance and our comprehensive preparedness <coughs> guidance. Um, we also provide technical assistance uh, to state and locals across uh, various efforts. And so, um, just like on the, on the guidance documents that we're releasing, uh, we're doing a lot of work around logistics, supply chain, evacuation planning, um, and some additional stuff I'll probably talk about a little bit later. Um, and then we also have our things implementation branch, which is you know basically responsible for the care, feeding, maintenance, and implementation of the National Incident Management System. Uh, ICS principles, all those tools uh, uh, related around that. So, so yeah, uh, now we get back to your question. The National Response Framework. Um, uh, so this largely is an effort that really, again, from the 2017 hurricane and disaster season, both all of the, the hurricanes that we had, the wildfires, a recognition that uh, with the um, nature of challenges that we as a country and everybody face, right, uh, during these incidents, that um, we needed to take a fresh look at how the nation uh, is responding and how we better understand situational awareness and how we better understand what truly is confronting us in some of these very large, very complex um, disasters. And so uh, there was a lot of conversation at the leadership level, a lot of observations about, you know, what, what we, from a national perspective, the reality really is that we need to go in and uh, stabilize um, these, what end up becoming these lifeline sectors that I think Josh may mentioned yesterday that you've been talking about. And so um, how, do we, how do we understand the operational picture? How do we organize ESFs and how do we organize our uh, private sector and work with the private sector around these um, more, uh, around these lifelines to stay, uh, for incident stabilization? So, you know, the, our administrator has uh, famously said all the time that, you know, one of the things learned is those where, you know, as Puerto Rico was occurring and, you know, there's limited uh, capability to get air assets into Puerto Rico, what were we doing? Uh, we, FEMA, we were, you know, trying to kick off uh, the private sector and we were putting our own teams because everyone thought FEMA's got to get in there, we got to get our teams in there. So we're, we were prohibiting in the beginning from allowing uh, the true private sector core capability uh, uh, experts to get in there and get comms back up and going and all that because, you know, FEMA had to come, right? So how do we take a fresh look at that? That was, uh, that's, you know, in our after action report. So as a result of those conversations, those observations in the 2017 after action report, uh, FEMA and the White House uh, said yes, we're going to revise the National Response Framework. Uh, so that's currently underway, um, and it, it's it, it, it's a very exciting opportunity because I think again it draws and identifies these seven critical lifelines. How the, the ESF structure that exists can um, form and coalesce around those lifelines, and then how we better understand our reporting, our situational awareness, and our assessment and analysis uh, around those lifelines. The second major piece, and I, I mentioned it in our in my uh, talk about um, that example in Puerto Rico, was you know we so we love the private sector, right? We talk about it. We like you know we want to work with the private sector. And we want to coordinate with them. And, but you know a lot of times we operationally have not, especially at the and I'll say at the federal FEMA level, have not been successful. And and again that that example that I provided is one of those things. So. We're taking, in, in addition to this framework refresh, we are really taking a hard look with our partners across the federal interagency and in the private sector about how do we actually formalize and more operationalize that private sector um, engagement so that we are directly supporting them uh, more so. So we're, we're introducing a much more, um, uh, as I said, kind of operational approach to this cross-sector, private sector coordination, especially when it comes to um, uh, our critical infrastructure. Uh, so we're um, so there's a lot of opportunity, especially for this group. I think and the interest that, that you have. I'm I'm hoping and thinking that the framework will orient us um, 
further so that we're able to better understand, as I said, and utilize the technology and tools um, that you all are doing a great job in, um, if we can simplify a little bit. And that's what we're trying to aim for in the framework. Yeah, it's interesting. We started to take a dive into these response lifelines and looking at things like what is the essential elements of information yep. that fall under each of those so that we can understand how we need to be looking at metrics for right. operations. Uh, and it's interesting because it does help to simplify an information management right. framework that can be used across the country at all levels of government as opposed to being just something that FEMA does or just right. something that's local. So I think it pre presents a really nice opportunity. I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out of the exercise in terms yeah, of what we're doing and, that. and this exercise, so you know, these opportunities like this uh, are great opportunities for us to you know understand the operational impact of this concept, uh, you know, utilizing it, you know, taking those lessons learned, best practice, all, all the you know the after actions that are going to come out of this. Uh, we're in the forming stage, right? So you know, the, the administrator and the White House were very clear that you know we want to you know we don't want this to be a multi-year effort that uh, has sometimes can happen in our agency, uh, but that you know this is targeted. We want something operational in place by next hurricane season. So we've been taking advantage of opportunities like this and clearly um, uh, exercising or utilizing some of these principles over uh, some of the last uh, couple of uh, disaster um, incidents uh, and events so that uh, you know, we can try and get this as ready as we can. And uh, it would be great for a whole nation approach to this, right? Absolutely. So shifting gears just a little yeah. bit, because I, you know, I happen to be a bit familiar with the NIC as well. You do, yes. <laughs> so um, you, you, know, there, you have many different program areas and you support the entire concept of the National Preparedness System at large. Right. So kind of taking it back into clear skies out of the response focus, it, you know, I would, I'd like to start with the IRA, the Threat Hazard Identification and Risk Assessment, because that's something your office has been engaged with over mm -hmm. the past number of years, and kind of understand, you know, where are things at with that, and then where are yeah. you going? Um, yeah, so that's uh, our National Preparedness Assessment uh, Division uh, has responsibility for FIRA and our you know preparedness reports and, and that. And you know, basically the whole intent of the National Preparedness System is really you know utilizing the, the cycle of preparedness, right, um, and uh, making sure that we're in a continuous improvement process. And so, uh, from the NICS perspective, and across those different things that I talked about and what we're responsible for, we're really using utilizing the input. So I know that. Um, some people consider those to be onerous, um, you know, uh, uh, Thyra and, and some of those requirements. But the great work that NPAD does through its continuous improvement program, through that process, uh, working with the state and locals and utilizing preparedness report is helping drive then us identifying where are those gaps um, and where do we need to increase the capabilities uh, nationally, right? So now I've, we've got a national focus. So that's why, you know, based on some of the uh, analysis that's come out and some of those after actions, that's why we really are uh, focusing our technical assistance, we're focusing our planning guidance, and even, I'll talk a little bit about here in a little bit, uh, the national qualification system. All those tools that we have, we're really focusing those now around those capabilities that are being, you know, the analysis is showing that, you know, we're struggling nationally with or at a state or local level. Um, so, again, the challenges around our ability to move uh, uh, commodities and supply chain and how well do communities understand um, uh, and, and have tools to be provided to understand um, the makeup of the supply chain architecture in their, in their environment, right? Um, is just one example. We've been doing some great work with Argonne National Labs on that. Um, and, and, uh, and also, as we move into this, um, uh, you know, res organizationally within FEMA, we've reorganized, and so we have this resilience that the, uh, a section or a resilience office that now um, we are a part of in our national preparedness system and, and, and all of our divisions are a part of. So how do we better understand then that the talk about resiliency, as you know, everyone uses it in a different way, but um, utilizing some of that data and some of the uh, assessments that have been occurring, we're also trying to figure out how to, can we provide technical assistance around uh, resilient communities, and especially post-disaster, um, what are those indicators that, uh, uh, that you know, state, local, tribal, the nation uh, can start looking at uh, to ensure and figure out um, how we could position communities to be more resilient in a post-disaster setting. And we can talk a little bit about that too. So, so all of that uh, uh, kind of being said is, um, 
you know, we're utilizing that information uh, that's coming in. And so that's why, you know, the, the, the additional information, especially about the gaps, right? Mm -hmm. So where is it that, you know, your current risk is that you see, where is it you want to be, and where is that gap area? That's what, that's what Congress, that's what the nation, I think, and that's what we're trying to figure out and make sure that we've got enough uh, information so that these tools and this technical assistance and all of these resources that we're applying are addressing those gaps. Absolutely, and I think this is actually a great connection point because tomorrow they'll be doing a national geo-enabled planning workshop, right. and ultimately anything that you do in the plans to geo-enable the plans starts with right. understanding risk in your community and your exposure and what that means to infrastructure and people right. and population. So for us, there's a really nice connection point with how the geo-enablement right. supports Thyra and then going into planning. Plan, planning so right. that's actually my next question <laughs> leading on. So yesterday, Josh spoke a little bit about the concept of geo-enabling the plans. Um, and obviously that's happening within mm -hmm. FEMA on the FEMA plans. Right, exactly. And then obviously you, you, from the next standpoint, yep. you work with locals and states yep. around EOP development yep. and all of that. And you have the CPG, Comprehensive yep. Preparedness Guide 101. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit more yeah. about so that? So I'll admit we are CPG 101. It's been years uh, since it's been updated. Um, and uh, it, we are, uh, it is a priority for us to kind of go through and update that, um, that document and the process. Uh, admittedly, the uh, drive and the desire for the National Response Framework update uh, uh, has um, refocused us a little bit, uh, so, so that is the priority. But um, right, with, the, with our comprehensive preparedness guide, uh, we really want to update um, and you know, use opportunities like this, identify those stakeholders, because we know that um, there's been so much evolution, right, operationally, and we've learned so much that in the guidance documents, especially the base, and especially for our emergency operations plans, um, that it's basically a rewrite, right? Because there's been so much involved and so much evolution. So uh, we are planning in this next fiscal year to start that process. Uh, and so part of uh, my desire to wanna be here today as well, knowing that um, especially for this stakeholder and this, uh, in, in your involvement, your interest is critical for what uh, the update of these documents, especially for planning um, in, our, in our emergency management programs and the EOP. So CPG 101, I envision, just like the NRF and everything else, is gonna look completely different um, and it's gonna be uh, uh, completely updated. And so, yeah, we, we want your participation, help. Uh, we'll be putting together a bit of a process and uh, starting to scope that out about how you, know, you could be involved in that effort. Uh, but that is something that we're looking at here for this upcoming fiscal year. Outstanding. Yeah, yeah. and actually the requirements that come out of tomorrow's session on the planning piece, which Absolutely. is EOPs, pre-incident plans, and crisis action that's planning, right. is something we can certainly provide yep. to you. That will so. directly feed into. That's that yep. These are one of those major areas, right? So that's, that's why I'm excited about what you guys are doing here tomorrow. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. So I know there's a lot of other efforts in the NIC that tie yeah. into all of this. So we, yeah. we're, we actually have a session following this on mutual aid. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's also a mutual aid and resource management component of yep. the exercise. Yep. So I'd like to talk a little bit more about both what's happening on the policy side and then where you are and where you're going uh, to technology enable some yeah. of those capabilities. Sure. So um, one of the major uh, efforts we have underway is uh, the development uh, under this mutual aid uh, construct, uh, the development of the national qualification system. And so um, basically, you know, the, I describe this as, uh, you know, how do we, how can we better position ourselves nationally so that when you know, we are requesting a resource in an individual or capability that we have a heightened sense of appreciation that, that, and understanding that that resource that we requested, we're requesting the right resource, we're calling it the right thing, um, and that it is capable uh, through a system that was in place to validate that the, the skills, knowledge, and abilities uh, and behaviors that that person is bringing to your operation uh, is able to, you know, exercise or able to execute and actually fulfill those functions. And so, you know, we've seen a lot of, um, uh, you know, examples in the past and stories about, you know, you're requesting, you know, an entire either incident management team or, you know, you, you need a planning strike to, uh, force or, you know, a, a op section chief, whatever, whatever the resource is. And, you know, yeah, they kind of met the, they, you know, they, they, they met the minimum or they didn't really perform very well. So, you know, there, existing nationally, there are different organizations that have a qualification system. FEMA's got its own, the FEMA qualification system. You know, I was just 
came in from the All Hazards Incident Management Team Association Conference, and they've really been focused on this effort around incident management teams. And then, you know, there's a slew of others. But there was nothing nationally. There was no national doctrine kind of pulling this all together so that, you know, there is a common infrastructure in place, both doctrinally and in tools, um, for these positions uh, to identify and type what these positions should be and then come to an agreement on identifying at a minimum baseline, at least nationally, um, what are those knowledge, skills, abilities, the um, behaviors, tasks, competencies that should exist, that this individual should possess to be qualified and then uh, certified and credentialed in that particular position. That, in that way, if we can we start building toward that, then we'll hopefully be uh, enhancing more and more effectively um, implementing a, a mutual aid system. So, uh, so that's kind of the intent of, of what we're doing under the national qualification system. So we released about a year ago um, some initial positions um, that were very you know response oriented, um, very incident management team oriented, and this goes back to where to help us identify the evolution of this national initiative and additional positions. This is where we're looking at the after actions. This is where we're taking the thyroid data on um, all of those areas where we see. You know where do we need to fill some of those gaps, and so the the next phase of positions that are going to be uh, that we're working on currently are very recovery focused. Um, we know that uh, our administrator as well, and, and we've seen are pointing out that you know we have large uh, that there, we we still have gaps um, nationally in our ability, especially related to housing recovery and um, infrastructure and and even recover just general recovery management. And so we're really focusing the um, the development of the national qualification system in these positions around recovery so we can help build, mm -hmm. you know, and, and recommend here's what, um, here's what those, uh, you know, competencies, tasks, behaviors are. So, so that's kind of uh, where we're at. Uh, we'll be releasing additional positions both for our national engagement, which is basically your comment, you know, time to, you know, offer comments on whether this is stupid or, you know, whatever. Uh, we do take all those seriously. Um, and then, uh, and then um, uh, you know, and, and continuing the, the evolution of that. Um, so we've released a couple things already uh, around that, the, the NQS guide we're releasing, mm -hmm. we're working on right now, uh, some guidance around, you know, how to have an effective uh, qualification review board. Um, all, uh, so the intent is to provide the tools, it's voluntary, but to provide the tools to the nation for state, tribal, territorial, local, even private mm -hmm. sector to start building these qualification systems um, if you don't have them already and help build capability in additional positions that you may have been wanting to do or that, that may exist. Um, I know I went on a lot. I, I no, can that, talk about that's what actually really, no, that's very helpful. Okay. Um, and you've made tremendous progress in this space just in a very short amount of time, really. Yeah. This is something that I know FEMA's been working on for, you know, 10 plus years. And yeah. just in the last year and a half, there's a lot now available to yeah. our stakeholders to actually start to implement again. So it's, that's the initiative that actually brought me to the neck. I, uh, cause I was in, uh, at headquarters, I was in the office of response and recovery. I was doing the FCO FDRC thing and, you know, and, and supervising over there. And then, yeah, I took this detail to the NIC to uh, kind of move the NQS initiative and get it going. And then, then I got, uh, then I stayed at the NIC. So I'm happy that that happened. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, it's been great to see the progress getting made in that space. And kind of related to that is more broadly on mutual aid. And yeah. I, I know this is yeah. another area since you released the, the NIMS um, mutual aid guidance as mm -hmm. well, which we'll be talking about in a session following, mm -hmm. uh, following this today a little bit. Um, but, you know, we've appreciated the collaboration that, you know, NAPSIG and our partner associations yeah. have had with FEMA and the NIC around mutual aid more broadly. Um, could you talk a little bit more about where you're at in that and your movement forward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, as I said, this is uh, one major initiative when we're uh, the NQS under kind of that resource management. Um, we're taking also a fresh look this year uh, under uh, mutual aid um, as far as what additional tools are going to be required, um, not only in, you know, what I've been talking about under the NQS, but um, in implementing um, a, and again, having a more effective mutual aid system. So in fact, we're bringing in stakeholders next week to be working on um, EOC and EOC engagement and mutual aid around EOCs and those tools. And in fact, I don't know, but Mike Shard's one of the ones that we're yes. bringing out um, as well. Uh, so we're looking at, at, at many of those things. Um, we're also building a tool um, and it's related to NQS. Uh, but um, we're working in, it's in a beta version right now, and we're calling it our one responder system. Um, and this basically is the ability to manage a qualification system 
uh, at your state tribal territorial, at your organizational level, at your, you know, as an authority having jurisdiction. Um, and uh, we're, you know, we're paying for it. We're, you know, building it out, working with our partners. But the intent is that there is a system again, for, uh, to enhance our mutual aid capability, but there's a system that you can manage at your level your entire qualification process of your organization. So everything from the assignment of position task books to, you know, to position mm -hmm. titles, to the training requirements and managing their training, uh, tracking it automatically, um, and then you know, automatically credentialing or uh, certifying and credentialing within the system. The intent is that that would provide us a better national picture then of where we at nationally for people and these positions, right? And you know who's qualified, who's not, you know who's working toward qualification and what positions. So we get a better analytic capability nationally, and that then at the local or state tribal level, you are able then to um, understand that picture of your organization and even within your regions and understand your capability around mutual aid uh, of uh, as well and and where those assets and where those qualified assets can be. So we're working obviously with NEMA, EMAC, and working on all of the technology around. Around that um, so you know we're working on the development of that system uh, as I said this year and we're, we're signing people up to pay you know play with it and uh, uh, see you know what else uh, what else can be needed um, but uh, again we're looking at this as as a, a way to better understand our picture of where those assets mm -hmm. are and then to continue building that capability once we know where you know we've got this many people on the pipeline for qualification or whatever um, we can be smarter about how we're um, orienting our training around and deliver the training that actually is getting people through that pipeline more effectively. Very exciting. I think we'd certainly like to invite the NEC back next year once Absolutely. you have the system up and running and do some Absolutely. more training around that. So and, again, and feel free to reach out because we could do demos for any organization. I mean, we, we've got webinars and stuff on what we've Great. got so far. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, but we're happy to, um, to do that as well. And we'll be sure to include that when we release all the materials out to the stakeholders. Sure. Absolutely. So, they, so we'll coordinate to make that happen. Great. So w just a couple more questions yeah. here as we wrap up. Um, yeah. So, and I guess that's part of it, is how can some of the folks interested here today, so we've got about 230 local, state, tribal, some NGO, emergency managers, first responders, and GIS technologists. Yeah. How can they help, help you, and how can they get involved in either doctrine development or technology? That you have underway. Well, you can feel free to shoot me an email, uh, <laughs> but we also have, um, uh, so, it, you know, there's that way. I also encourage you to really have a good relationship with the region. So we mm -hmm. at the NIC and MPD, we've got representatives, you know, we're connected with the regions on, on the initiative. So, you know, making sure you've got, you know, connectivity um, uh, with the FEMA regions, which I, I think you all do anyway. Um, but clearly, um, a more direct way uh, around the development of what's going on and, and what the NIC is doing, um, you can sign up for uh, our, our NIMS alert at FEMA NIMS, uh, uh, yes, yes, at FEMA.gov. Um, uh, you can sign up, and then that's an automatic. So, all the products that we release when we talk about national engagement, um, we, we do it that way. Um, or, again, feel free. Daniel.Alexander at FEMA.DHS.gov. Shoot me an email. I'd love to meet with you. Um, and then, again, I, uh, my branch chiefs, I've got four branch chiefs across these uh, that are working these initiatives. We can certainly get you in on the work groups. Um, most of them are virtual, um, but we, we want to try and get as much of your expertise as possible as we kind of move down the path of either revising or developing these new products and tools. Excellent. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, kind of Closing out today, before we give folks a chance to ask yeah. just a couple questions, mm -hmm. what's one thing that you would like to leave all of our, our participants with today? Mm. It could be anything, anecdote, whatever it might. Um, I guess I was trying to be funny and think okay. of someone I can't tell. <laughs> um, my jokes are never funny anyway. So uh, I, I guess I would say, you know, kind of, and, and I heard the opening comments about uh, Josh, and congratulations for Josh getting the award, uh, well deserved. Um, and, it, and me, I'm clearly not a technologist uh, like him, but uh, you know, kind of coming um, from law enforcement to you know, falling into Homeland Security and emergency management and then finding my way to, to DC is to me, um, you know, whenever you're working on anything and, and there's an initiative or something that um, you know, you're, you're trying, to, trying to do, um, you know, I, I always found myself and in, in found that where we've been challenged is because we have not forced ourselves to sit and say, you know, seriously sit and analyze who's not at the table um, and who are we missing 
um, because I, and, you know, I, I've done it as well, and I'm trying to be smarter about that, and you, know, you learn as you go along. But um, you know, in this collaboration, coordination, we throw those words around a lot, but success is so truly dependent because I have been burned on a number of occasions where you know, there's something coming out of left field when you're going down the path mm. of an initiative or whatever, and you didn't take the time to really figure out the, the, you know, the terrain, right? And you didn't really figure out, okay, who do I need to engage? Who do I need to make sure I've got it as an ally? All of that to be, mm -hmm. so to be successful in our business um, to that level, I, I think is, you gotta really take the time to really understand the landscape you're about to venture into um, and where the politics are and figure out how you negotiate okay. that because uh, it can derail you, so. Yeah, thank so you. So coordinate as much as you can. Yeah, it's interesting. That's one of the themes here is it's not technology isn't usually the right. challenge. It's usually the, the people, yeah. the communications and the process. Right. So if we can get that, then, right. you know, your yeah. technology will move forward quickly. That's right. So thank you. Absolutely. So I, I would like to just give an opportunity if sure, some of absolutely. our participants have, you know, one or two burning questions, be it on NRF, be it on Thyra or anything else that Dan has shared with us today. Any questions from folks? We have one question up here. Um, Trisha's gonna pass around a microphone. If you could be sure to talk right into the mic, that would be great. Hi, I'm Tanya Kidd with the Arkansas Department of Emergency Management. Hi, Tanya. And we're actually using the um, qualification task books yep. as templates and trying to implement a new training and qualification system. Great. Um, at, at the beginning of the year, and I think that you mentioned that, that, that you have a tracking system. And we're still kind of building it, but we're, we're in a beta environment. We've got users that are, are playing with it. So I'm happy to um, talk with you afterwards, but it, it, it exactly is the ability to manage your right. qualification and track those qualifications and all of that. Yeah, I would be very interested in that because I'm basically trying to build a tracking system right now, and that's what's keeping us from... Let us save you some heartache starting. and maybe money. Yes. <laughs> all right, let's connect right, right after that. Thank I'd you. be happy to, sure. Thank you. We have one more question right over here. Uh, hi, Stephanie Hackett. Uh, hi, Stephanie. Hi, dude. Um, so actually, I have another question about the, um, I think, first, resp first one, response system. What? Uh, uh, the, the tracking the, system. Yeah, one response. Um, so mm -hmm. as you guys are kind of putting yep. that together. So I'm curious, is that going to be, or is that designed to track um, kind of this new NQS system exclusively, or will that give us the capacity to also track mm -hmm. um, some of our existing qualification systems that might exist already at the local, regional, state levels? Yeah, so it's got, um, it's being built out to have that functionality, and that's why we're having some of the conversations with states that already have, so that we can build, and again, I'm now talking technology stuff that I should not be, because, uh, but the, the capability and the API and, and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So, um, so the short answer is, th the intent is that it has that capability for you to, to u utilize it in that manner. Um, this is, you know, we obviously want the bridge, we want the connection with the, uh, uh, the, the NEMA EMAC uh, system and, and the mutual aid operating system and all of that so that, um, you know, you have the ability if there's additional, you know, systems or processes that you have in place uh, that it can function in. So part of this building environment that we're in is, you know, what are the, what is that, what does that look like, right? Uh, what, are, what is being used now across the states? Um, and this is part of the conversation I had with the All Hazards Incident Management Team Association folks who are really obviously for uh, nationwide incident management teams. Um, you know, they're very interested in this as well. Uh, so, so the short answer is yes, um, but let's talk about and see what that looks like as part of this building phase. So with that, I wanna say Great. thank you, Dan, so much for Absolutely. your time today. Thank you. Great to be really back. Good to see everybody. I'll be around all day, so thanks.